I probably still will, <laughs> and then I'll, this will get worse, so. This week we find ourselves on the island of Syros and what better way to explore than by scooter. Yeah. And the damage is only 20 euros so it's pretty good. Yeah, we've been saving up to rent a scooter for a while now. So, it's going to be hot. It's going to be real hot. Purple uh, or yellow? I don't know, that one totally matches your shirt so maybe you should wear that one. James isn't wearing one but no. I am. Safety never takes a day off buddy. Safety Steve. <laughs> Oh man, you are totally matching. That's I wonder perfect. if it was like planned. Maybe. Oh yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> James can't get the motorbike started. <laughs> Bring on about it. Hold in the brake. Hold down. You're not holding down the brake. I was. Shouldn't be both. It's just that. How come it's not even going now? I've got my helmet on waiting. Oh. <laughs> you got it? Maybe do a quick loop around. Make sure you know what you're doing. Oh, there you go. I just had to keep the rain. Do you want to go without me for a bit? Yeah, that's Test it off. Yeah. I'm just going to adjust my mirrors. Um, 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 um. Good to go? Yeah. So unsteady. <laughs> yeah, we're all right. Are you comfortable? Yeah. That was awesome. A little bit nervous at the beginning. We had shaky. a bit of a wobble. A bit shaky. I can see it in your eyes. I can feel it in your touch. I can hear it in your voice. Though you haven't said that much. Through an empty bottle. I can see. Where are we? What's the name of this place? Uh, Asos Dimitrios? I think so. So many stray cats everywhere. <laughs> yeah, there's cats everywhere. Yeah. Look at that water. That is something else. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. We just found this cool church in Asos Dimitrios. This is our bike derby. But we've been calling them Durbo. So behind me is the main port and you can actually walk down this huge flight of stairs all the way down to the main port. And I have no idea how many it is but it's got to be at least probably two kilometers of stairs all the way up. It's mental. Thank you. 
know, they got the uh, purple helmet. Bam! <laughs> Special visor for when we go really fast. After a day checking out Ceres, we hand the bike back and do an overnight sail to the island of Paris, just 25 nautical miles away. It was a very last minute decision due to the high Matami winds that were expected to blow through for the next few days. We are in Greece. We're officially in Greece now. Really. Because now we have the white buildings with the blue windows, <laughs> which is what I have been waiting for. Uh, what island are we on? I forgot. Paris. Paris. having rowed out a Meltemi in Peros. So pretty excited, we're just dodging through this little passage and a whole pile of kite boarders coming up, which should be interesting. So we're going through two islands at the moment, Paros and Antiparos. And we've decided not to stop in Antiparos because they are under the same restrictions as Paros, which uh, due to COVID, you have to wear a mask outside and inside. Yeah, we've decided to go to a quieter island where there's not so many tourists and we're not so worried about covid and just a ton of restrictions and curfews and stuff oh, like yeah, that the curfews. yeah so yeah so we're just going through the two islands now we're a little bit bummed we're not gonna see anti paros but we're heading to this new island which should be good and we've got a ton, a ton of uh kite surfers here yeah so i'll show you those when we get through some amazing sailing. We have the wind behind us, we got the head sail out only and we're doing almost seven knots of speed and the seas are dead flat right now. We just never get to do this. So, this is awesome. <laughs> Woo, 6.9, 7 knots. Downwind, 7.1, 7.2. Come on, 7.3. I wonder what the apparent wind is right now. Battling with an earache for the last couple of days, haven't you? Yeah, I've got a bit of an ear infection. And I'm really upset about it because I still go in the water, which I sh probably shouldn't. And at this anchorage that we're going to, there's a World War II aircraft. And I really wanted to be able to snorkel. I probably still will, <laughs> and then I'll this will get worse. So we'll see. Yeah. Like, I think we were, like, we were thinking it was going to take like five hours and it's taken four, 
four and a bit, maybe? No, three and a, three and a bit. Yeah, three and a bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah we've had downwind, on the beam, forward of the beam, <laughs> at the beam. It's been good. Yeah. Averaging over six knots, and when we were doing downwind, we were about, we got up to eight knots. Yeah. With just the head sail. Yeah, it's so good. So, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, pretty happy about that. Two reefs in the main, one reef in the head sail. We're still in a sick nap. So, Nat and I were just talking, and we were just thinking about all our time in the Mediterranean so far. And we wonder if there's anybody else that has literally sailed the entire med, like we have so far, without a wind gauge. Of course there is! There has to be. This, this sail we're on at the moment, you know, we've had wind gusts easily over 35 knots. We don't know for sure, <laughs> but it certainly felt like gusts over 35 knots, with, you know, steady winds of probably over 25. <laughs> Does it feel like a Tuesday? It feels like 25. <laughs> that's going a little crazy at the moment. No, tell them that's the Lee Evans. Yeah, so there's a really good comedian that we like to watch called Lee Evans, this British guy. And we're not, we're, I, I think just not having one for all these months has just made us pay attention to the sea state, you know, checking out how the wind is coming across the water and you know, anticipating having to put reefs in. We're probably not sailing as efficiently, but I feel like it's made us better sailors because we've had to, you know, learn how the sails and the wind and the boat and all that sort of correlate. But that being said, we desperately need a wind gauge. And we'll probably just have to order one when we're back to Spain before we head off to the Canaries, so. But yeah, that's my little uh, ramble, as Nat would say, for now. And Nat's gonna go back to her craziness, and we've got about 45 minutes until we reach the anchorage. Woo. We stern to to the island of Iroquia and jump right into these spectacular crystal clear waters. to think the world of you But somewhere down the line We changed and we grew and we fell out of touch After checking the anchor we head straight over to almost the middle of the bay to snorkel over this I know that it's time for me to let you go I know that it's time for us to part Though it breaks my heart Found in just over 9 meters, there is a Narado AR-196 German seaplane. It's a lightweight, two-seater, single-engine seaplane which was used by the German Air Force during World War II. The plane crashed after a battle with a British aircraft in September 1943. The seaplane was shot down, yet the crew survived and were rescued. The seaplane was later found in October 1982 at a depth of around 90 meters by local fishermen when it got caught in their nets. The fishermen dragged it to this bay where it remains today. I know that it's time for me to let you go. I know that it's time for us to part, though it breaks my heart. Next week we go and find ourselves some more wrecks along with our very own anchorage and have a little fun trying my board out. I'm just telling James that this is my favourite island. <laughs> and he said it's one of his favourite, one of the top ones. Yeah, definitely. Oh. 
If you are new to our channel, consider subscribing so you can join the adventure each week aboard Zephyr. If you would like early access to weekly videos, bonus content, and free merch, click the Patreon logo here. This journey is only made possible thanks to our amazing patrons. Know that it's time for me.